of 13. Max Eel had picked up his third personal foul. Little uh, three-quarters court pressure here with Garnett on AI. Wait, Garnett loves defense. This seems to go by us. <laughs> oh, is he fun? Six seconds different. Shot clock and game clock winding down on the second quarter here at the Garden in Boston. It's a play they normally run for Christian Wallace. Here's, here's Max Eel around Tony Allen. Rebounded by... Paul Pierce, can they get that final shot away? Prince will watch Pierce. And the truth, oh, rejected and fouled inside. Kwame Brown was in there defending with Max Hill. Well, that was poor clock management by the Pistons. They took that shot too early on the clock. And when they did, Boston was able to come down and be able to. Here's going to be a technical foul. So we've already got some chirping going on here. We'll see who this is on. I think it's on. Uh, I think it might be Perkins. Brown. Oh, hold on. You're right. That's number seven. I just had talked about that. So uh, on the 26th on the team this year. Uh, Doc Rivers cannot be happy with this. His team has played well here in this quarter. They have an eight-point lead. You got a chance to knock down a couple free throws, go up ten, and now you give a chance for Iverson to knock down this free throw. So it could be a little bit of a momentum switch. You see Kevin Garnett going over here and talking to Kendrick Perkins. They asked Kendrick Perkins before the game, he said, is Kevin Garnett a good role model for you like that? He says, not when it comes to talking. <laughs> gets me in trouble. Yes. Like the kid in school is it's in back you, right? Uh, yeah. Doug, you said in our meeting earlier today you were going to be able to tell a lot about the kind of night Allen Iverson was going to have by where and when he took his shots. As you've watched him this first half, and he's taken eight, he's made four, he's got a game high 12. What? What have you seen the way he has attacked the Boston defense tonight? He's still figuring out where his spots are with this team. You know, he's still figuring when he's got the ball on the top of the floor where he can attack. They're playing him off the ball with Rip Hamilton putting Tayshawn Prince on the top of the floor. They're playing him as a two-guard with Stuckey. So he's still finding his way along here, too. So you know, not only is the team adjusting to Allen Iverson, but he's also uh, adjusting to his team. So we've reached halftime. Earlier on, Detroit led by 11. Washington now on top by 9. Celtics have led by 13. So we had a 24-point turnaround in that first half. The big three of Boston. 17 of the Celtics, 49 points. Outside that realm are guys like Tony Allen, who is standing by with our Cheryl Miller right now. Tony, in the first game against Detroit, you finished with 20, uh, 23 points. Tonight, you have 9. What is it about the Celtics to bring out the best of it? Well, you know... Um, when we come out and play Detroit, coach always give us a prep talk for the game. We got to go hard. So basically, that's all I'm doing is going hard. You know, Doc said that he wanted to really try to taper back the minutes of the starters. Talk about the second unit and your mindset. Oh, yeah, we got to be key coming off the bench night in, night out. Um, and Doc preached that. So as long as we stay strong as a unit, we could get far. All right, thanks for your time. All right, thank you. All right, when we come back after the break, we'll be sending it down to our Atlanta studios for the T-Mobile Halftime Report with EJ, Kenny, and Charles. Broadcast is presented by Turbo HD by Dish Network. Beautiful Boston, although very, very chilly. We're on TNT NBA Thursday with the Celtics on top, 49-40. Kevin Harlan and Doug Collins. What is interesting is Detroit jumped off to an 11-point lead. Boston came back with easy points with their bench. They put a lot of things together. Well, Detroit five of their first six, and they got out and had seven points off turnovers early, made a couple threes, so they were winning those, winning those two areas big, Kevin. Then all of a sudden, when Boston went to their bench, the game changed, and um, it's, it's the, this Boston bench has been the difference here tonight. Let's take a look at some of the highlights of the first part of this game. Detroit was on fire. Iverson set people up. Well, he got on that baseline a couple times. The first time he found Tommy Brown for the easy score. This time he was able to drive. No weak side help, something you don't normally see from Boston. The easy score, but then the lane got shut down, and in comes the bench for Doc Rivers. Rondo finds Tony Allen, who had nine points off the bench, was a big part of that bench area. This is Leon Poe rolling to the basket for the easy score. And then Eddie House, I talked to him at halftime. I said, you got it rolling tonight. He said, I needed those two quick threes, so... Kevin, it's interesting. You talk about the three stars of the Boston Celtics and how everything plays off them, but in the six quarters against the Detroit Pistons, the three stars 
Pierce, Allen, and Garnett have 49 points. The rest of the team, 88. So that bench for Doc 